Pastor David, it's a big, big day, and I get to be a part of it. How good is that? I, lo I love history. I love studying it and learning from it. And there's a quote, famous uh, St. Augustine said, Oh God, that I was privileged to live in such a day. And I want to tell you that I hope you feel the same way about today. It's easy to look around and, and see uh, we live in a broken world, but we, in the context of this broken world, we come with grace and truth and hope. And when people's souls are crying out for, we get to deliver that. We get to show them our Savior. So with that in mind, in the Lutheran Brethren, we have a phrase uh, that we want to be a disciple-making movement. And there's a lot of discussion, well, how, how do we do that? And I want to tell you today that the best way to do that is to understand that we have been invited, and then how did it happen to us? And so when we think of Jesus, of course, we primarily think of him as our Savior and our King and the lover of our soul. And, but he also said, here's how you do this. Here's how to make disciples. I will make you a disciple, set you free to be a part of setting other people free. God has always been a God who is, initiates. In John chapter 1, we see that in the beginning when was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. And then we, we read later in verse 14 that Jesus Christ came to dwell with us. He moved in with us, and, and he came alongside us. And, and in John chapter 1, you have John the Baptist, who was kind of a big deal at that time. If you remember, people were going out to the wilderness to see him. And there's a transition in John chapter 1 where John's followers are, are wondering about this new upstart Jesus, and, and John looks at Jesus, points to Jesus, and says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And he's basically saying, he's it. He's the one that we've been waiting for. And in that moment, as that transition happens, we see Jesus, the first words of Jesus in, in, John chapter, in John's gospel, and they come, and these followers of John are coming to him. And he turns to them and he says, what do you want? What are you seeking? What is your life pointing towards? What matters to you? And they say, well, uh, where are you staying? And he says, come and see. I want to tell you today that in those two comments by Jesus, if we follow him down that path, we will connect with the people in our community. Do you, are you interested in what people are seeking? Our tendency might be to try to correct them right away, to get their, their act together, to, to rebuke them for, for the silly beliefs they hold. But thank you, Jesus, that when we come to you all the time with our screwy systems and our failures, you keep going, come and see. So I want to tell you today, we are interested in people because we should be. Jesus loves them, and he invites us to as well. And then we say, come and see. Come and live life together. I, it's been awesome to be here at Pilgrim just this little bit because I see that happening here. I see that it's natural in this place with you to connect with people just because you love them. And then say, we'd love to do life with you. So I want to, this morning, uh, to journey with Peter. Scripture is an amazing thing. The power of God in it, that the Spirit of God pulls us into it, and, and, and we find ourselves in it, and then it invades our lives today. So with that being said, I'm going to ask you over the next few moments to be Peter. I'm going to speak in kind of a paraphrase of part of Peter's story. I'll refer to general passages, but I want you to just kind of soak it in and journey as Peter and learn what it's like, learn how his life was transformed, and I think you'll find incredible similarities. So you're going to be going in and out of your setting into Peter's setting. And so it begins when you, now Peter, are brought by your brother Andrew to, to Jesus. And you first encounter Jesus, and the first thing he wants to do is totally change everything about you. So he changes your name. And he does that with Peter right from the get-go. He changes his, his name. And for all of you, and the time comes that you become a follower of Jesus Christ, you become a child of God, you become set free, you become all these wonderful titles, and yet you're unique as you. So Peter, you, journey along, and you see miracles, you see lame people walk, you see blind people see, 
And you, you hear words from Jesus that are just amazing in their love and their truth. And, and you just journey with him and you see him love people like no one has ever loved anybody before. And you're on this incredible journey with Jesus because he said, come and see. Let's do life together. Matthew 16, we see that all kinds of people are getting really into Jesus. And Jesus says to his disciples, who do they say that I am? And they, and Peter, will, or the disciples say, well, some say that you're a prophet, and Elijah, you're, you're kind of a big deal. People are drawn to you. But what do you say? Peter, you, who do you say I am? And you go, well, you're the Christ. You are the one. You are the Son of God. And Jesus looks at you, and he's got this big, beaming smile on his face that just sets your world right. And he says... That was revealed to you by God, by the Father in heaven. And what you said, Peter, is the answer to the cries of people's heart. Hell cannot have anything stand up to that. The keys to heaven itself are in that proclamation, and people are set free for all of eternity. And you are pumped. You are just like, whoa, this is awesome. And then the story continues. And Jesus goes, and I'm going to suffer, and, and, and people are going to turn against me, and I'm going to die, and you think, no way. And you've gotten a little puffed up, because you're the inner crowd now, and you've just been told, way to go, Peter. And Jesus delivers this difficult message, and you say, I'll take over from here, Jesus. No, that's not the plan for us. We've got a different way we're going to do this. And now Jesus looks at you and he says, get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance. You relate to this, whoa. It's an amazing trip that you're on. John chapter 13, we, you've been journeying now with Jesus. You've seen all these things. You've been kind of going up and down like this. But he's consistent. He's always inviting you back. He's inviting you in, doing life together. He says, we're going to go celebrate the Passover in the upper room. And you get into the upper room, and Jesus is always, he's one that is, you never know what's coming, kind of. And he goes, okay, guys, I'm going to wash your feet. And you don't like this. Because you're Peter. And you're kind of a big deal. You're in the inner, in the inner group, and, and that's not what you do. You don't wash feet. And Jesus says, you're going to wash feet if you're going to follow me. <laughs> and then it continues from there, and, and Jesus talks about uh, amazing things about the Holy Spirit, and he prays for everybody, and it's, it's an amazing time in the upper room. And, and then it gets tough again. And he describes that suffering and those things, and that people are going to turn away. And you say, you would never do that. I mean, Jesus, you named me the rock. I'm solid. And Jesus looks at you and he says, tonight you're going to deny me three times. And you're crushed. You don't say anything, but you're thinking, no way. No. It's not going to happen. Few chapters later, John chapter 18, you were led by Jesus to the Garden of Gethsemane. You've been there before, and it's a time to pray, and Jesus asks you to pray, and you're shot. It, you're wiped out. You ever been wiped out? You ever have, like, nothing left in you? And, and Jesus says, pray. And there's, there's this kind of heaviness about it. You can see it. And he goes off to pray. A couple things happen back and forth. All of a sudden, there's a group of soldiers coming with priests, and they got torches, and, and you're watching them, and, and they're coming towards you, and, and you get worked up, and you got a sword, and you swing that sword, and you cut off someone's ear, and Jesus says, stop it. And in that moment, what you're doing is you're thinking you're going to you're going to deliver by power and authority. I want to tell you, now you're back here in this place. This is a huge problem for us, followers of Jesus Christ today. We, for some reason, are still addicted to positions of power and think that he's going to do his work through 
through uh, things that, that uh, look like celebrityism and that kind of stuff, when Jesus says, I'm, I'm the one who does amazing things when no one else sees anything. And he wants you to know today that he can do incredible things through you. Even though, outside of mentor, maybe no one really knows your name. <laughs> but Peter wasn't a big deal either. He was just a fisherman. And as the story continues, as these soldiers come towards Jesus, I want to now go back for a moment to Exodus chapter 3. And you remember in this setting, we've got Moses who has been given the task that you are going to lead this huge now nation out of, of Israel out of Egypt. And, and, and Moses is terrified. Of the, who, who in the world? I remember he had a stuttering issue. He, he knew of his inadequacy to do something like that. And he says, how can I do this? Who are you? What is your name? And you remember the burning bush? And, and God Almighty speaks to Moses to deliver to him what he needs. And he says, Moses, I am who I am. I will be who I will be. Everything that you need from this day forward, nothing will come your way that I am not able to meet the need. Because I am all you need. I will be everything you need. I am. So the soldiers come to Jesus in the Garden of, of Gethsemane. And he says, who do you want? Who do you seek? That sounds familiar. Did he ask that earlier? Who do you want? What are you about? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. You know what he said? I am. I don't know how this happened, but when he first said, I am, it was as if the law and the righteousness and the judgment of God were packed into that first response of I am. And in that moment, it was as if Jesus in the garden spoke, I am God Almighty. I am the beginning and the end. I am the Alpha and the Omega. I spoke and the world came into existence and we're told that everyone fell down. And you, Peter, went, cool. This is awesome. And they started getting back up again. And Jesus said, who do you seek? And if you were one of those soldiers, instead of Peter, you might be going, oh, do we ask this again? Or answer this? And they said, Jesus. You see, Jesus. Maybe cowering a little bit. And Jesus said, I am. And I don't know if his voice was a little quieter but somehow, I think, in that moment, he delivered the gospel. Mm -hmm. The second time around, he said, I am Jesus, the Lamb of God, the great lover of your soul, the Redeemer, the greatest friend you could ever have. I am everything you need. And he bound his hands behind his back. And the greatest power there has ever been and ever will be, let them arrest him and carry him away and take him to be beaten and mocked and scorned. And you were terrified. And you went into hiding. And you watched from a distance. And, and you know the story. And, and the rooster crowed three times. And, and you remembered what Jesus said. And, and, and Jesus even looked at you when that happened. And your soul was crushed. You were disappointed in yourself. You were far more like Satan get behind me than the rock. And you knew it. And, and Jesus was led away to be crucified. And he was crucified. And you were terrified. And what you thought your life was all about somehow was now just obliterated. What you thought was your great hope, the one we've been waiting for, has been crucified. It's a tough Friday, but Sunday comes, and you know this. And you're terrified on Sunday. But then these ladies come with a message that the tomb is empty, and you run with all your might, but you're an old guy, and you're slow, and John goes flying by you. And he gets there first, but you're Peter, and you do, like, I love Peter. I love, like, thinking like Peter. He's like this time. Kind of like the guy I see in the mirror every day. And, and you get there, finally, and you look in and go, whoa, he's not here. 
And in your mind, you've got all these things he's been saying running through your, through your head, and you're going, what did he say about this? He always talked like there was something coming. And, and as you're walking back, you've got this glimmer of hope in you, this thing, faith, that just kind of bubbling up. By the way, that was Jesus, not really you that made that faith thing happen. That was all about him and everything that happened because he walked with you and he spoke to you and he loved you. But you're still kind of terrified. And later, you and a bunch of guys are hanging out kind of hiding because you're wondering, <laughs> well, what's going to happen to us because of what happened to Jesus if you're recognized as a follower of him. And Jesus shows up. He shows up, just boom, he's in the room with you and these guys, and he says, shalom, shalom, peace. But it, we need to understand what it means when, when God's word says peace. It's not peace like, oh, cool, you're not in a fight right now or not in a war. When Jesus says peace, when God Almighty says peace, he's saying, you be whole. You be who I made you to be. You live in the freedom of who I have claimed you to be. But you're having a tough time receiving that. In fact, you're kind of cowering back in the corner because you always knew Jesus was powerful. You saw him heal and everything, but now he came back from the dead. And you denied him three times. And there's something in that's kind of wondering, is he still for me? And John chapter 21 comes along. And you and another crew, you're out, you're fishing, because you know how to fish. That's, that's what you do, is, is you fish. You're, you're professional at that. And you're trying to go back to some sense of normalcy. You're trying to put this whole thing together, everything that happened to you. You've, you've been walking with Jesus. You couldn't get enough of Jesus. You were amazed by Jesus. You loved Jesus because he loved you like no one has ever loved you. And he kind of came back, and, and then he was gone again, and so you're fishing. And you are out, and you've had a tough night fishing. You haven't caught a thing. And you can smell a fire on the beach, and it smells good. And there's breakfast cooking, and you are starving. And, and then the guy yells out, catch anything? No. Just life in general just is miserable right now. I, we got COVID running rampant, and we got to wear these masks all the time, fogs like my glasses. Wait a minute, that's, that's, no. He just says, we didn't catch any fish. And Jesus says, throw the, throw the net on the other side of the boat. The guy from the shore calls it out, and Peter had heard this before, and he does it, and the net's filled with fish. Just amazing. Unnatural. Like a miracle of fish. Probably can do a whole fish fry from that one <laughs> load of fish. And Peter looks up. You look up. And you look at the guy on the shoreline. And his face is like the sun rising. And he's got a smile on his face. And you think he's smiling you and he waves and you jump in the water because that's Jesus and you swim like you never have in your life before and you swim with all your might and you get there just to bask in the presence of Jesus one more time but there's still this component of you that's terrified because you screwed up But Jesus came back from the dead to make you breakfast. I want to tell you today, Jesus comes back for you, all the big things in your life, the little things that only you smile about, the weird things about you that no one else knows except Jesus, and he loves you. And he makes them breakfast. He makes you breakfast. But you're still kind of hanging back. And then Jesus looks at you. I mean, he looks at you from here. And he says, let's go for a walk on the beach. 
And now I want to tell you, you are fully you in this place, in this moment. And Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, the Lamb of God, the great love of your soul, is calling your name. And he's inviting you to take a walk like Peter. And if you know the story, he journeys with Peter, and he asks him three times, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? And you see that Peter, by the third time, is kind of hurt. That it's like, Jesus, I get it. I failed you before. You probably don't, don't trust me. I don't know when it happened, but at some point, I have no doubt, Peter, after Jesus maybe ascended, he went, three times! He invited me back in three times. He reinstated me. He set me completely free. And so today, what is the junk in your life? What are the failures in your life? What is the stuff that you have been hiding and running from and making sure that no one else knows? And Jesus Christ left heaven and came to earth for you and to deliver you from that. So that you and I get to walk through the days that God has given us. You as Pilgrim Church get to impact this community and the people that God invites into your world and you walk up to them and you say, what are you about? What are you seeking? Let's do life together. Come and see. Come and see what it's like to be a follower of Jesus Christ. I'm not perfect, but I've been set free. <laughs> Jesus does stuff like makes us precious. So this morning, that's all I really wanted to leave you with is the fact that Jesus Christ, the one who in the Garden of Gethsemane speaks and people get knocked over because he is completely the perfection and the holiness of God. He is God Almighty and nothing less. And then he is the Savior who said, take me to the cross. Because like today, I get to say, David, from before time began, this moment was put in place. Hmm. And for all of you, it's nothing less than that. Jesus wants you to know that he has a life of freedom and joy set forth for you. Mm -hmm. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you that you invite us to follow you. You invite us to learn from you. You first invite us to know you as our Lord and our Savior and our King and our Redeemer. And then you say, follow me and bring others to me. So Lord, may we do that. May we celebrate this high calling that you've given to us. And may we enjoy being who you created us to be. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Pastor Dave, can we have you come up here? I invite all of you to, to follow along, to listen. At some point, I'm going to have a couple questions for you. But th this is this is an exciting time for you as a congregation, exciting time for you, Pastor David. And, and uh, I want you just to rejoice in what God is, is doing. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Pastor David Martin, I have some questions for you. Do you believe that the Bible is the Word of God and is therefore the final authoritative guide for faith and conduct? Yes. Do you love the Lord Jesus Christ? I do. Do you love God's children? Yes. Are you willing to the extent that God gives grace to work for the purity, edification, peace, and growth of the Church of Jesus Christ? Yes. Do you find that the statement of faith of the Church of the Lutheran Brethren is in harmony with the Word of God? Do you believe, teach, and confess this statement of faith? Yes. Do you accept and will you work in harmony with the constitutions of the Church of the Lutheran Brethren and this congregation? Yes. As far as you know, your heart, are a desire to serve God and a desire to see people come to know Jesus Christ and to grow in him the motives which have led you to accept this call? Paul wrote, keep watch over yourselves and all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Be shepherds of the church of God, which he bought with his own blood. Will you, by the power of God's grace, live a holy life, properly care for your own family, and by faithfulness, diligence, and love, do the work of a pastor? Yes. Do you prom promise to preach the word and administer the sacraments as the word of God prescribes, and do so for the glory of God, the salvation of lost people, and the edification of the church. 
which is the body of Christ. Yes. I'd like the congregation to stand and let the elders come forward, please. <coughs> Do you, the members of Pilgrim Luther Brethren Church, stand by your pastoral call previously extended to David Martin? If so, answer yes. 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 Will you at this time, and as long as he will serve faithfully among you, receive him joyfully, share all good things with him who is to instruct you in the word, show him Christian respect and obedience, and encourage him in the Lord? If so, answer yes. Yes. David, do you stand by your decision to accept this call from Pilgrim Lutheran Brethren Church to serve as their pastor? If so, answer yes. Yes. David, I hereby, hereby install you in, to the office of pastor of Pilgrim Lutheran Brethren Church. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. May a rich measure of God's grace, <coughs> guidance, and power be upon you, your wife, your family, congregation as you work together for the extension of the kingdom of God in this community. A couple of prayers offered to you. Let's pray together. Father, as we gather here, we are so thankful to you. For this is an incredible day for all of us as we come here and worship you, Lord. We are here to serve you first and foremost. Uh, I pray for Pastor Dave Martin, our brother in Christ, and Amy, his wife, and their children, Lord, and their family. We are so thankful for them in our presence, and we are so excited, but we ask you to bless them, keep them, and guide them as you will do, as a, that Pastor Dave has accepted this very special calling. And I just pray, lead his way as he moves into a very new chapter in his life. And pray that you smooth the way there, provide him with the guidance and wisdom that he needs. Uh, pray for Pastor Bob and Jan. We give them thanks for 33 years of serving with us as well, a senior pastor. And as these two learn that they work together now <coughs> in an expanded ministry within your church here at Lord Jesus at Pilgrim, we just pray um, and look forward to the future that you have for your church here as we serve you, Lord. Uh, pray for Pastor Dave as well as he continues his education at the seminary. Uh, smooth the way, Lord. Uh, that uh, as he goes through, that uh, as he learns, that uh, you would guide him through that process as well for completion, Lord. We're just excited about all of this. Please bless him and keep him safe. We pray uh, for you, this congregation as well, Lord. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dallas. <clears throat> Pretty exciting this morning. Pastor <clears throat> Dave's father is also a minister. A lot of you know that. Many of you have maybe not met him. He's here this morning, and we asked him if he would pray our second prayer for us this morning. So come on up. Great to have you here. I, I'm going to ask you to do something that I do in my church. And since we can't lay hands actually on Dave, can you raise your hand in prayer yeah. today? <laughs> Let us pray. Great and almighty God, we, we praise your name. As we gather here today to install David as the associate pastor of Pilgrim Lutheran Brother Church. It is my prayer, Lord, that you will continue to bless David as he strives to live as a godly man, that you will continue to fill his heart with your love and wisdom and graciousness. Help him, O oh Lord, to feed this flock with his knowledge and understanding so that they will be fruitful and increase. Help him, O oh Lord, to lovingly care for all of his cares so that they will not be afraid or disappointed with the world that we have right now and that they will have everything they need to be spiritually mature. Help them to challenge them to re rely upon the gifting and the power of the Holy Spirit. And, O oh Lord, may David always be a loving friend by encouraging this church family to be invested in their mutual ministry and dedicated to prayer in all things at all times. And I ask you, Lord, personally, to lay a special blessing upon this family because, Lord, they brought David and I together through their prayers. And we are so thankful, Lord. May you be praised and may your kingdom be glorified by all that we do today and every day in the future. We pray this all in the great and powerful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Will you please join me in prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this 
save our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. I want to thank you so much uh, for calling me here. I'm um, so anxious to, 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 to do life with our congregation. Um, you have been a blessing. Um, you've, you've helped me to grow uh, at what I came here as, as just a congregation member. And from that, you've given me the opportunity to teach. you give given me the opportunity to preach. Um, and God has worked in me through you. And uh, as, we, as we get ready to go here, as we begin, um, I just I look so forward to helping us as a church to grow in Christ every day in, in our individual lives, but also as we reach out to our community, as we do life with our community. Um, I will just I, I just I pray that it'll always be Christ at our center and Christ at our center here in the church as well. Um, thank you very much. Oh, yeah. and I'm and I'm gonna be preaching next Sunday. And I'm gonna be preaching next Sunday. <laughs> Yes, it is. 